Mic check, mic check. A pleasant good morning to everyone and welcome once again to another edition of the Carlos Brown Show, heard exclusively right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network and Spreaker.com. Today's guest menu, May the 8th, looks like this. Coach Jason Rollins, new head football coach at Southern University, he is scheduled to join me in our number one. It'll be an interesting conversation with uh, Coach Coach Rollins, of course, you know, last week, appointed interim head football coach, but he joins me here on the Carlos Brown Show. Then in hour number two, Charles Edmond of the Alcorn State Radio Network jumps aboard. He'll be uh, talking some Southwestern Athletic Conference baseball, and just maybe, just maybe, we'll see if he's convinced, just maybe a little bit, if Jackson State is the real deal in baseball, still undefeated in a conference, pressure, pressure in the SWAG baseball tournament. Then finally, last but not least, uh, Brandon B.J. Jones of HBCU Game Day. He'll recap SWAG football, also uh, SWAG spring championship game, and then his early, his early predictions or at least how the conference at SWAC Football Media Day, how will they predict the order of finish? And, of course, we'll be taking your uh, questions or comments. You can do so via the Facebook uh, Messenger app, the Coles Brown Facebook Messenger app. The guests, Coach Jason Rollins, Charles Edmond and Brandon B.J. Jones of HBCU Gang Day. Here's what's trending on the Carlos Brown Show. Congratulations to Alabama A&M 2021 Spring Champions, a 40-33 victory over Arkansas Pine Bluff. The SWAC 2021 Outdoor Track and Field Championship is being held on the campus of Prairie View A&M University. And you can watch that on Swag Digital Network starting today at 1 p.m. Also of, of note, a new Georgia law legalizing uh, college athletes, their likeness. But wait till I tell you, within that law, there's something that should catch everyone or should have caught everyone's eye. And then finally, there continues to be frustration about no HBCU players selected in this past draft. Although you have some undrafted free agents, uh, I'm looking at some names that are signed on. But I also uh, pulled up an article from the Washington Post, and it you know it says coaches show frustration. We'll get a little bit into to that. So that's what's trending on today's. Coles Brown Show. Remember, you can find me on all social media platforms, Twitter, Franchise underscore show, Facebook, The Coles Brown Show, and then on Instagram, Carlos underscore Brown underscore show. And also remember, if you care to donate, make a donation to this show, you can do so via Cash App at The Coles Brown Show. Coach Rollins, Charles Edmond, Brandon B.J. Jones, all in the guest uh, menu on today's show. What do you think? What were your thoughts on the SWAC championship football game? 40-33. to Going into this ball game, I simply thought, which defense between University of Arkansas Pine Bluff and Alabama and m which defense – would be able to contain, not necessarily stop, opposing offenses. I thought uh, Alabama and them did the better job of that. Also, you look at uh, 
penalties by the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. They really extended drives uh, for Alabama and them. You, you can't do that. And then in the second half, you look at Alabama and them only giving up seven points, and that was in the fourth quarter. So for basically the second game in a row that I've seen, uh, University of Alabama a uh, and they were able to make adjustments in the in the second half. You had a lot of big plays on special teams. Uh, University of Arkansas Pine Bluff, an 81-yard kickoff return. Uh, then you had Alabama a and point after attempt return back for two points. Those are special team plays, and, you know, we always talk about it. Special team plays can win and lose you a couple of ball games in uh, a football game. 17,248. Nice attendance in, in, in a pandemic. You look at some key statistical numbers. Uh, Alabama and them was able to outrush University of Arkansas Pine Bluff 97 to 88. Net yards passing, Alabama A&M, 271 to 236. Total offensive yards for the University of Arkansas Pine Blood, 324. Alabama A&M, 368. Alabama A&M ran 83 plays to 66 to the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. Uh, possession, time of possession. Alabama and them, 33 minutes and 54 seconds. Arkansas Pine Bluff, 26 minutes and 6 seconds. Third down conversions. Arkansas Pine Bluff was better, 50%, 7 of 14. Alabama and them, 5 of 14. Individually, Akil Glass was 24 of 45, 271. And I really thought that, and hats off to, Arkansas Pine Bluff, Mr. Glass kind of started off slow, but he was able to pick it up. Skylar Perry, he threw for 231 yards. But overall, Alabama and them gets it done. And now they go from being the champions to being hunted in the fall. The same could be said for the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. But uh, 40 to 33, Alabama a and completes their spring season, 5-0, and zero. University of Arkansas Pine Bluff, 4-1. Uh, to one. Coming up on today's show, Coach Jason Rollins, Charles Edmund, and Brandon B.J. Jones. Dr. Prince, producer of today's show, good morning to you, sir. Well, good morning, sir. How are you today? I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. How about yourself? Well, I just slipped out of the witness protection program, so I'm I'm okay right now. Now, why would you be in the witness protection program? Well, I did a list <laughs> of mm-hmm. coaches that um, were collectively on the hot seat, and I made the mention of a certain guy who just got the interim tag on him, and, mm-hmm. man, Southern Knights came out of the woodworks on me, man. Not understanding mm. how why I had it like that, but we, j- we because we you had him on the list uh, yes. or on the hot seat. Yeah, the list of the hot hmm. seat, and we in a room coach, in a room coach auditioning mm-hmm. for his job. Okay, there's no legitimate security in that. That to me warrants a hot seat. Hmm. He has an opportunity to make it a long lasting deal, but. You know, boy, they came out of, man, how did you come up with him on the list? And blah, blah, blah. And then when I explained it to him, some of them said, oh, okay, I guess. But it is what it is. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. I wouldn't necessarily have him on on a hot seat list, one, albeit an uh, interim basis. And it was interesting that Dr. Scott, who was a guest last week, didn't like to use the term interim, but right. um, it was officially listed as an interim coach. This will be his first upcoming season as, you know, leading the program. No um, doubt. No doubt. So yeah, that, that, I, doesn't, that doesn't warrant you. If you walk into a job and they say, well, we don't know if we want to hire you permanently just yet. 
That doesn't even need to make your seat warm. Mm, not 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 hot, not even warm. It's expectation, you know. And, and based on everybody else on your list, they've been there. They've coached at that program multiple seasons. Correct. They're correct, but but it is mm-hmm. it is duly noted. No play mm-hmm. on words that he's inheriting a team that is stock loaded, ready to go, and it is a desire of Jag Nation's expectations that we are to win right now. So if I'm putting you on and I'm bringing you in at a handsome salary and we got every all the cupboard is full, all the cupboard is full, and I don't want to hear no excuses. That sounds like the seat's warm to me, and I could be totally wrong and off point. Now, as he gradually gets into his position in the leadership role, the seat couldn't cool off. But entering into this season, and I've noticed the key point was entering into this season, who's on the hot seat? And and some say, well, you don't even have McKinney on the list. Well, McKinney is not quite there. He's on deck, okay, but he has (laughs) two years left on his contract. And right now, it would be a $700,000 buyout. And Texas Southern, to the last of my knowledge and understanding, are not in a position to buy out a two-year deal like that with what's on the table. So, collectively, he has a year of grace and mercy. Hmm. Hadn't won a game, right? Hadn't won a game. Got a, got a, one of the high salaries in the conference, correct? Yes, sir. Hmm. Wow. Whether they could pay him out or not, they had the money to offer him a salary. Hmm. Well, yeah, but yeah, and, and no, no, no wins. Okay, and not on the hot seat. Uh, can't agree with that one. Well, he would one, probably he would probably be number one. Well, and if, number two would be Coach Dooley. If they were financially in a position, he would have definitely been at the top of the charts. But once again, well, with the logics of. The, uh, the financial makeup of the situations. You know, now we had Fob at number two. I mean, at number one. And the reason we had Fob at number one was because he does have a bow clause. This is the last year, then that bow clause kicks in. And Grambling could more than likely handle that if push came to shove. Okay. And with the, the situation that he's walking into this uh, year, um, he's definitely. On the hot seat, there, there's been integral parts moving in and out. You know, we have a new athletic director soon to be coming on board and offensive coordinators coming on board, quarterbacks leaving, quarterbacks coming. Um, and then the fact that you stumbled against Prairie View since old Dooley left. And to be quite honest with you, the office has not been the same since Dooley has left. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, McKinney would definitely be number one on my list. Number two would be Dooley. Let me say this about Fobbs. Based on, and, and again, I, I, it depends on what is your criteria for being on the hot seat. Uh, I will say this. Coach Fobbs deserves the right to turn it around, the chance, mm-hmm. based on what, what, what he's done. Um I see people uh, 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 getting really excited on the interim tag, you know. Um, that, but that made me look at something, and and I, I kind of look at trends. It, it's it's multi multi factors, and I, I know some people are saying, "Well, wait a minute, you're the one who's saying Atlanta a bus." Yeah, that's expectations. Expectations is one thing about the fans and what they believe. But we can kind of try to have fun, estimate, get in the heads of the director of athletics at each institutional program. And I, and, I, and I went and looked at the 2012 Southern University football schedule. 2012 ended up Southern being four and seven, correct? Uh-huh. Coach Odoms was on the staff. Southern lost to the University of New Mexico. Wow, 66 to 21. Remember that one. 
like to forget that one, but it's in the past. But we have to use it for historical reference. Then they played a Thursday night game against Mississippi Valley State, 6-0. Everyone knows what happened, right? I mean, as soon as that game was over, basically Coach Stump Mitchell was gone. He was let go. Thus, uh, interim, and, and that's the word everyone is in love with, interim. Jackson State, his first game, Coach Odom's interim, 28-21. to They defeated Jackson State. Then the next week, the Atlanta Football Classic. They defeated FAMU, 21-14. to 2-0 and zero out the back. Can you notice now the, the, the emotions are high? Wow, we, 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 we've got our guy. Then October 6th, they lost to Alcorn State, 2-1. 20-17, one. One, one homecoming, good thing to do, 34-7. to seven. Pine Bluff put up 50 points on Southern, 50-21. to 21. Prairie View puts up 49 points on October 27th. Alabama A&M lost in overtime. Now you're on a three-game losing streak, correct? Pine Bluff, Prairie View, Alabama A&M, Alabama State Senior Night, 31-30. to I remember that one. If I'm not mistaken, Southern went for two points. There was a big question. Why not go for the tie? It's in an overtime. Didn't happen. Then the Bayou Classic, 38 to 33. So that season ended four and seven. Coach Odoms was four and five. Based on that, and what some people have been telling me, then if they were in charge, they would not have given him an extension and, and take the interim tag off. He was responsible for nine games. He was four and five. Four and five. Interim removed. Now, why did you think why why would you think they moved the interim tag off and decided to give it to him permanent? Then the next year is 2013, correct? You asking me that? You asking me that question? Well, I'm just saying in general. Oh yeah. Two, two, 2013, Southern wins SWAC football championship, and one game that stood out to me was Jackson State in the regular season. They lost that game. So, I guess his seat was hot too. He would have been on the hot seat. Four, four and five. Let me ask you this question, sir. Let me ask you this question. Mm-hmm. Do you believe that team, since you're comparing notes for historical record, do you think that team was locked, loaded, and ready to go to win a championship under Stump Mitchell when they released him? I thought they would have been a competitive no, team. No, 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 I, no, no, no. no, no, no. Let, wait, wait a minute. Let me finish. I said a championship team, not you, a competitive you, you're, team. You're asking me. And, uh, let me finish. Okay. Let me finish. That team, if you would have asked me, were they, were they capable of winning a championship? I would have said no. But, but they were able to do it. And that was Coach Mitchell's, Stump Mitchell's talent. Was it, was it Coach Coach Oldham's talent. Okay. Now. But but they, they were able to they were able to win the championship the next year. Not only that, the next year they went back to the championship and thus they lost to Alcorn. A key component to factor in, sir. Stump Mitchell was fired. Oldham's left. Okay. So yeah, because Stump Mitchell because Stump Mitchell was fired. And they saying, well, he's underachieving for whatever reason. That's why you would warrant an extension toward Odoms when you saw, okay, he was kind of able to rally these guys together, put some things together. Let's give him an extension and see how he handles everything. And the rest is history as far as I'm concerned. In this case, you have a guy who is inheriting a team that everybody, you just went three and one. And technically speaking, you probably should have beat Pine Bluff to be playing in the championship game. A team that is very seasoned and ready, poised to win, according to you and all the other experts and uh, Southern Knights saying we are ready to win right now. That was not the case. When I say win right now, I'm talking about championship. You had just admitted that, no, I wouldn't have said they couldn't have done that at the time Odom took over. Now, at the time that Rollins is taking over, and it's not a picking on Rollins, just looking at the logics and the reasoning with everything that he's inheriting. 
That's why I say the seat is warm because he said, OK, I'm in the seat now. I got to make sure that we keep everything flowing plus wind because he already knows what he's walking into. So so what so, so which is it? Is it warm or hot? Which one you saying? Tomato, you, you tomato. You had them on the hot list, tomato, right? Tomato, tomato. Warm, hot. No, 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 no. Oh, you said my. hot. You get, you said you hot. get emotional. No, no, I'm not emotional. You are emotional, sir. Because, oh, Because Odom's, in your opinion, he if he got an interim taken off and he had a losing record, you don't think that Rollins, and, and just my humble opinion, my humble opinion, is this if he wins seven eight games i would i would extend him give him an extension i would give him a new contract but this was basically about your list correct about who's on the on the hot seat i i just don't agree with everything but that's all right we can agree to disagree of course we can agree to that's what makes talk radio talk radio exactly. but but and and the and the reason once again the reason that i say his seat is hot warm heating up however you want to uh, justify and identify it is because of what he's walked into there is no room for error you have to come in and win right now, with everything we have locked and loaded, with the expectations of the fan base and the administration, you cannot logically and reasonably tell me that that man's seat is not warm or hot, however you want to identify it. I just told you. I don't agree with it. Okay. I mean, that's as simple as that. Some people will agree with that. Some, some will not. I, I would not have an interim coach who has not coached one game on a hot seat. Oh. Again, we're talking about expectations. That, that as a Southernite, that's my expectation. Atlanta a bus. So you know, it, call, let me ask call you that re, call that realistic, unrealistic. Call it arrogant. Call it whatever you want. Let, let me ask you this, Carlos. Every it, coach has has, and every fan base has expectations. No doubt, no doubt. Now let me ask you this. And, and why was why wasn't Doolin number one on your list? I, I explained to you why Dooley wasn't number one on my list. Explain it again. Dooley was not number one on my list because head-to-head -head competition, he has beaten Gramlin three consecutive years. And the last thing on Gramlin's list is, hell no, we can't be losing the Prairie View no four times in a row. So that's why Dooley is two and Fobbs was one. That was okay, the logical so reason. The logical reason. And, but wait a minute. Wait a minute. Based on that, you think Prairie View fans are happy with 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 just beating Grambling? No, and then sir. And 0-2 I, against I, Alcorn? 0-2 no, against I, Jackson State? I know I mean, for is, a fact. is that the standard? I know is for a fact. Is that the standard? No, that's not the standard. But if you if you would listen with reason, I said going into this, Dooley is on the final year of his contract. His contract expires in December. Okay? Mm -hmm. He... Technically speaking, it's 14 and 13. But if you remove Edward Waters and Virginia Lynchburg, he's 12 and 13. He's sub 500. OK, his seat is definitely hot. OK, but the inside lane that he has over Fobbs, he has beaten Fobbs three consecutive years. And that is not the standard of Grambling State University. Agree or disagree, and they, they are, it's just like your, um, your omen with Alcorn. You're like, man, that, that, you're hell bent on, we got to beat Alcorn. So, therefore, walking into this season with everything that has been brewing up, you're coming off a winless spring season. You're coming uh, uh, into some questionable gray areas. You got another new offensive coordinator. You don't have an athletic director. Your president is on the prowl. The fan base is heated up. That's why he's number one. Mm. And those are all logical, justifiable reasons. Yeah, logical. That's what you say. Yes, sir. Logical. It's not. It's definitely not emotional. No, I, I'm not emotional. Well, you I said mean, you said my my I was emotional. Well, I, I just I just know that you are in the group of people that Odom's is so loved. You know the story. It's great what he's done. 
it is a business decision that that happened. Now, I'm ready to move on from Coach Odom. But we, I we've wish all him, moved I on. wish him the best. And and th- and those polls, you know, I can understand uh, those polls are, are, are having a, having a list. But I, I just don't think, in, in my humble opinion, Rollins can be put on a list and he hasn't coached one game. And you know what? At the end of the day, Coach Banks, them, they will have a decision to make. They will have a decision. It, 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 it won't be because of my emotions or what I feel. I, I just gave you my opinion on why he would not be on the list. Just like Dorsey. Dorsey wouldn't be on, on the list because, you, you know, you know what has happened at Mississippi Valley oh. State? It's it's it, it, it. But time will tell on all of this. Again, just my opinion. He does a good job. He wins eight games. He's definitely going to get an extension. Then then okay. we'll move on. Let me ask and, you and this. And speaking of that, it's ten twenty six. Right. Let me. If if he wins six games, does he get an extension? In Carlos Brown's opinion, yes. Okay, then. So, if, and, and so this doesn't, to you, count up to a at least a warm seat. I'm on an no, interim. I'm on no. a, hold on. Hear me out. Hear me out. I'm on an interim basis. Okay. I know the expectation for me to win, right? Whether I've coached or not before, you said it was an excellent hire because of the experience that he's bringing to the table. I'm not going to argue that. Okay. So then the fact that, the seat and the expectations and the pressure to win right now doesn't warm your seat up, and you don't. And you're walking into a job with an interim tag. It's no guarantee that you're going to be here next year, and that's not a warm seat. It's no. It's no guarantee that do it will be. I there already, next we week. already acknowledged that. So that's why. Well, I, well, well, I'm I'm answering your question. No, I, I don't agree with it. Okay. I mean, what 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 else do you want me to say? You don't agree with it. Yeah, I, I just just don't agree with it. When, when the fall season comes and everybody will we'll have this discussion again after the 2021 fall season is over with. And again, the administrators, they will have the final say on, on all of this. I have to take a time out. I'm going to move on now. Mm-hmm. When I come back, I'm scheduled to talk with uh, Jason Rollins, head football coach at Southern University. I'm going to refer to him as Coach Rollins, head in the Southern University football program. I'm kind of like Dr. Scott. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to get tied up on the interim, the interim tag. He's head football coach. He's leading the pro. He's, lo- he's losing the program. I'll take a time out. You're listening to the Carlos Brown Show on the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Drivers and bicyclists both have the right to be on the road and travel safely. And when we're on the road together, safety is a shared responsibility. State law requires drivers to maintain at least three feet of clearance when passing bicyclists. And bicyclists should always ride with the direction of traffic and follow all traffic signals. It's safer. It's courteous. It's the law. A message from the Regional Planning Commission Pedestrian and Bicycle Program. Ladies and gentlemen, in the next seven years of bigger and bigger enrollments, America's grade schools will need nearly a quarter of a million extra teachers besides those to fill normal vacancies. This great need, plus the growing public interest in education and improvements in schools, make elementary school teaching a more rewarding career than ever a career that high school and college students should certainly consider. Education holds America's future, perhaps your future. The birth of legends are storied in this conference. We must never forget our rich history. We now turn our gaze to the future. The new legends will emerge. New heroes to arise. The Southwestern Athletic Conference. Be our history. Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union has 13 different locations to better serve you. Locations in Rosenberg, Missouri City, Katy, College Station, Bryan, Brenham, and Waller, Texas. For more information, you can contact them on their toll-free number, 855 855- 
391-2149. Or you can send an email to information at bvscu.org. Serving the community through faith and athletics. The Open Mic Broadcast Network. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Carlos Brown Show. Heard exclusively right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network and Spreaker. My first guest of today's show, he was in the news this past week. Now, head football coach leading the program at Southern University. And his resume, if I would talk about it, it would take uh, just a while. So without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and introduce uh, Coach Jason Rollins, head football coach at Southern University. Coach, good morning to you. Welcome to the Carlos Brown Show. Good morning. Good morning. Glad to be here. How are everybody doing this morning? Well, we're doing fine, and it's uh, not a – it's an exciting time, not only at Southern University, but in the Southwestern Athletic Conference, and we, we're going to talk with you on, on several points. But um, first and foremost, Coach Rollins, congratulations on becoming the head football coach at Southern University. And I just want to get your thoughts now. O- a little over a week has passed. Um, uh, being named the head football coach at, at Southern University. Can you reflect on that for us? Well, it's been a wild ride, I'll tell you that. Uh, you know, kind of unexpected uh, with uh, Coach Odoms taking another position. And uh, whenever that happened, you know, we just – everything just came fast. Um, you know, the whole process was good. It was, that was quick. But uh, after that, you know, the getting the players together, uh, giving them comfort, letting them know that everything is going to be okay. And uh, they were happy. And uh, – and going from there, it's just been a, been a wild ride. Finally catching my breath this morning. <laughs> oh, I, I understand. And, and Coach, your, your resume, of course, being at Southern University a short period of time, but if you look at it, um, what, defensive coordinator, co-defensive coordinator at the University of Tulane, defensive coordinator at Texas San Antonio, and, and in your press conference, you kind of thank the coaches who have influenced you um, talk, talk about that, those coaches that have influenced you in your profession, and then also uh, talk about uh, your background being at um, Tulane University and, and uh, University of Texas San Antonio and McNeese State. Well, I, I tell you what, I, I, I've been blessed to be, uh, you know, under a lot of great coaches, uh, great teachers, just uh, guys that really love the game of football and knew it in the ins and outs of football. Uh, from the ground level, um, I mean, I learned a lot from each and every one of them that I was under. Uh, as far as uh, the one who gave me my start was uh, Coach Tommy Tate, as far as, and he taught me the ins and outs of football, just the game of football, of teaching football. Then, you know, take another step. I went with uh, Coach Scott Stoker and up at Northwestern State, and then I came back with Coach Tommy Tate, and then he gave me my uh, first opportunity to be a coordinator at Magnet State. And uh, stayed there for a good while. We had a good run, and then I left and went to Tulane. And uh, you know, it's kind of a great opportunity. You at one university, but you're under three head coaches, so you learn a lot from three different head coaches there. Ending with Curtis Johnson, uh, started with Bob Toledo, uh, Curtis Johnson, and I spent a time with Willie Fritz, and uh, moved from there to University of Texas at San Antonio with uh, with Frank Wilson, and and from there he actually. Uh, just was hands on. Hey, this is the program. This is how we're going to run it. Being that I was associate head coach there and also the defensive coordinator, um, just getting that opportunity of hands on experience of how it would actually be if you are in that chair and and all those uh, different stops led me to where I am today. Vision of Coach Jason Rollins, head football coach at Southern University, and Coach, you just talked about the coaches who have in, influenced you, and thus now being the head coach at Southern University, first and foremost, I think most Southernites really wanted to know about the staff and w- would there be any um, movement on the staff? Or I know in your press conference you stated that um, the, the staff would be in, in, in intact. Can you speak on that? 
Absolutely. Um, you know, when this process started, uh, the guys were all, they wanted to keep it rolling. So all of the staff is intact. The only position that has to be filled as of today is uh, my position. And, uh, and But the offensive coordinator is here. The defensive coordinator is here. Uh, everyone is intact outside of my position as of today. Okay. As of today, do you, Coach, do you expect, you know, in, in a transition, do you expect that you have to be making any more hires? I I don't expect, but you know it's college football, and uh, you know guys get opportunities that uh, that they may not be able to have at the universities they are that they're located. So you know, but I don't expect that to happen. But that's why I always say, as of today, that yeah. um, we don't have any uh, any turnover outside of my position. Coach, how important is it that as of today? You have that staff in, in tech. Will, will that then allow you to basically hit the ground running? And then to add on to that, you also in your press conference talked about uh, tweaking some of the things that you guys do. Well, you know, when you say tweak, it's not really tweaking of the program. It's just the tweaks are just a different personality. So okay. Coach Dawson Odoms is Coach Dawson Odoms, and this is Jason Rollins. So personality-wise, the main main of the tweaks. So mm-hmm. as far as just the, the structure of the program, it's in place. Uh, coach Odoms is an awesome, excellent coach. Um, great disciplinarian, great organization, uh, just a really good coach. So as you can see, the program was very consistent in winning. But as far as uh, the tweaks, this is just mainly just personality as far as who I am and who he is. And that's the, not the, that's the only tweaks as far as that. Okay. Well, that, that kind of clears that up. I'm visiting with Coach Jason Rollins, head football coach at Southern University. Boy, we, I've had some spirited talks with uh, <laughs> Southern alums, um, also on this show in the first first hour, uh, simply because <laughs> if you say, Coach Rollins, the Roth is built for success right away. In my notes, I put a championship roster. You know, you come in with a roster that is built for that. Now, if it was another way, then you would be responsible for that. But if you can, Coach, expectations. Keeping built on a championship roster, is it easier or is it – wait a minute, hold up. You have the talent, but you still got to go out and get it done. Absolutely. And, uh, we, you know, we know what the expectations are, but it's not any different. You're a Southern alum, you know, that's the expectations every year. So we plan yeah. to, to meet the expectations. So it's every year's a it's a, a championship roster. So we know what the expectations are. So we we plan to meet them. <laughs> that that was short and quick, <laughs> Coach <laughs> Rollins. <laughs> so, you know, you so, go any farther, you know, you may dig a hole that you can't get out of. You know. <laughs> right, right. I I I understand. And it, is there any? How, how do you deal with the expectations? I guess is what I'm I'm, I'm getting at. With 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 the with the roster that that that's in place and that's built for a championship. Well, right now we're uh, we're just preparing. You, you, know, you prepare for the season. You know, starting with the summer conditioning. Then you go into your summer football school uh, portion of it. Then you go to your fall training camp and uh, work on yourself. And then you start planning for your next opponent. Your first opponent is Troy State or Troy. It used to be Troy State, but uh, Troy. And then you keep going day for day. You know, you can't win a championship. In one leap and bound, you have to win it every day. And so that's how you manage the expectations. That's how you prepare to win a championship. Right now, we have to win the West. And uh, the team that beat us as far as the Arkansas Pine Bluff. So we have to prepare and to beat them. So even though we have championship expectations, so do they. Because mm-hmm. yeah. they are the defending West champions. So we have to go and get them. So there's not any pressure. <laughs> yeah. Well, I understand that, Coach. And – uh, we, we're going to get your thoughts uh, a little bit on that as well in, in the conference uh, uh, of the, the schedule. Uh, we just talked about built, being built for success. Um, from a philosophy perspective, will we see Coach Rollins continue what is already in place? And I guess when I asked about tweaking earlier, offensively and defensively, talk to us about that as far as your ideas of what should take place with this 2021 um, football program? Well, going into the season, you know, there are five new coaches on the staff, uh, with me included. 
so as you can see, we started to gel and get more staff chemistry as the season went on. Right. So we're just going to continue in that direction as far as knowing who we were and who we are and uh, kind of knowing who the players are and what they do best. So we're watching cut-ups from the fall, I mean the spring, and just to kind of see what our guys can handle and who they are. And we kind of figured it out as the season, the season went on to know um, what they do best offensively, uh, who are the playmakers, who aren't the playmakers. Uh, defensively, we figured out who we were and how we're going to go going forward as far as the, the type of front we want to run, the type of coverages we want to, we want to run. Uh, are we a pressure team? Are we a, um, a read and react team? So we kind of figured that out as the season went on, and and we jailed, which is why we're so excited about having a uh, staff chemistry and staff continuity going into this fall. How about the players? And you you've had a chance to finally you know meet with them. I'm, I'm sure. Yes. With the team meeting. What is their mental process about all this, you know, with now you taking over the reins of the football program? I, I'm sure there's a familiarity, of course, well, that's very important. It, you know, as the um, as a special teams coordinator, you have the the opportunity to speak to the entire team, you and the head coach. So they they were very familiar with my voice and who I am as a person and who I am as a coach because you start off every day with a special teams meeting, but it's also a team meeting. So after mm-hmm. the head coach addressed the team, the special teams coordinator has the opportunity to address the entire team. So it wasn't like I was on one side of the ball, so they know who I am and mm-hmm. what I'm about and my demeanor and my mentality. So it was a smooth transition. Cutting up that film. Boy, I wish I could be in the in the film, film room. But I guess I won't be a, be allowed because I'm not a coach, a coach on, <laughs> on, on on the staff. But you but you kind of look at I guess things that work well, the strengths. Then you also look at some things that that as a team you can get better at. Correct. Right. Correct. Correct. Um, there are several areas that that we can um, improve on. Uh, you know, several areas that we want to continue to grow on. But um, just watching it, just making those different uh, notes and adjustments and just mental notes and going through personnel wise, you know, we just have to get bigger, faster, and stronger as, as everyone else, because, you know, we had a shorter off season, mm-hmm. you know, going into the, we missed most of the fall of strength and conditioning early. And so when you started back in January, we were, we're actually practicing as opposed to being in spring conditioning. So right. that's an area that we're going to have to really focus on this June and uh, July to make sure that we can, um, uh, survive 12 weeks Coach, now, as far as schematics i don't want to give that up just yet <laughs> oh no no i, I do, <laughs> duly noted i i, I understand because uh you have a uh ears listening from throughout the conference right now and uh you know they're they're sitting back and just uh, observing if you get my drift <laughs> absolutely <laughs> and, and, and speaking of personnel then that leads me to my next point recruiting in the yes. press conference, I believe I heard you say a tank of gas philosophy. I know Coach Odoms used that philosophy as well. Could one say, Coach, that tank of gas philosophy means home base Louisiana, but that I-10 corridor? Absolutely. Houston, I'm uh, over to Pensacola. That area. Absolutely. So, you know, if you look at my resume and the places that I've coached, it's pretty much on the I-10 corridor, mm-hmm. you know, from San Antonio to New Orleans. And – in between from Lake Charles and Magnese State here at, at Southern and, you know, being a Magnese graduate, most of my coaching career was on this I-10 corridor. So all the relationships and the networking that you've built here in that area, it goes a long way. But with that being said, it's probably the most talented area in the nation. So with a tank of gas, you can get from Houston to Pensacola from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Mm-hmm. And, and, and driving, that's about four hours? Yeah, it's four hours, to, four hours to Houston. Four. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jackson, two and a half. And it's by the way, team. Coach, uh, one of my colleagues, a big Jackson State alum, and he's definitely saying he's listening, yeah. So uh, <laughs> we, we're going to watch him very closely. <laughs> hey, hey, keep your left eye on him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm visiting with Coach Jason Rollins, head football coach. At, at Southern University, talking about the tank of uh, gas philosophy. Now, of course, um, with social media, a lot of a lot of people can really look at and gauge the interest 
of student athletes, you know, using social media uh, to recruit, huddle, and what have you. Has that changed the perspective of recruiting in this time and age, or is it just it's still the same as far as recruiting? Well, you're able to reach out and uh, cast a, a wide net with social media. Um, you can get film and access to guys that that are outside of their tank of gas that you normally wouldn't be able to get. So social media has really helped uh, bring more, but what it's also done is is brought people to your backyard where normally they wouldn't be able to get there. So it goes both ways. Yeah, I can understand that. Boy, it, it's just like sports, sports talk, sports talk radio. When you first started, social media was not part of it, but now it's incorporated into um, – your show. I'm visiting with Coach Jason Rollins, head football coach at Southern University. Um, coach, the t- 2021 schedule, it's tough, but I guess you can say that about every uh, institution in, in the conference. Uh, a, a tough schedule. You start off with, with Troy State, then you have Miles, and then, wow. Coach, that you just mentioned. That's right. <laughs> uh, coach right. Frank Wilson at, at, at McNeese State, but but You've had a chance to look at that 2021 schedule. Uh, your, your thoughts on, on, on that football schedule? I mean, it's exciting. It, it's, it's great. You know, uh, all our, our guys are competitors, and they love it. You know, our fans, as you know, they love it. So we want a tough schedule. We want to play in the big games. This is why you go to Southern to play in big games and play in front of huge crowds. So we wouldn't want it any other way. It's, and being that it's a conference game, it's going to mean more. So you're going to have all hands on deck and all eyes on us and all the attention in the off season because we know why we're practicing what we're preparing for for that schedule. We want that. Coach, y'all, y'all be friendly up until a certain point, right, for that, for, for that McNeese State game. Um, we're enemies for 60 minutes. <laughs> that, yeah, there, there you go. That, that's the mentality. No magic nine via Thomas, you know, kissing on the cheek before the no, game. No, 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 no. Okay. No, oh no. Good. <laughs> just, just a handshake, a, a quick chatter, and then let the chips fall uh, where they may. But speaking of that McNeese State game, and I'm interested to hear your answer on this, Be- because you, you collegiately played at McNeese State. You've coached on the FCS level. Southern's on the FCS level. How important is it, though, to be competitive and win those non-conference FCS games? It's very important because uh, we want to show that we are. It's an in-state uh, game. And yeah. it's also, uh, being that it's in-state, you have recruiting ramifications that come from that. So we want to uh, let them know that we are on par with every other FCS because Magnus is an FCS powerhouse, that we're not just a our HBCU powerhouse, we are an FCS powerhouse. And to do that, you have to beat those in-state, out-of-state, non-conference FCS programs. Yes, sir. Coach Rollins, the spring season just passed, and your exposure, if I'll put it that way, to the culture at Southern University, um, the pageantry, of playing a game like the Bayou Classic, albeit in the spring Jackson State, did you get a chance to appreciate those type rivalries? I've always appreciated from afar. Uh, mm-hmm. Being in state, uh, you know, you 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 sit back, you watch. Everyone knows about the Bayou Classic. Everyone knows about the Jackson State Southern game, the, the rivalry. Everyone knows about the Southern and the Alcorn rivalry. The Southern homecoming, the pageantry, the bands, the tailgating. So I've always been a part of it, but just from afar, you know. Now, my wife is the, probably the biggest Southern fan that you would know, so she mm-hmm. lets me know every day about Southern. But um, so just being a part of it, it was just everything that I imagined going through the spring season. During your press conference, you mentioned Southern is the standard. Explain uh, that. Uh, and I'm sure, Coach, that's going to be another one of those cocky, arrogant Southern Knights. Wow, unbelievable. But ex- explain that. Well, I'll explain it. Um, Southern Southern University, um, in my opinion, that's where the university that everyone compares themselves to. 
So we set the standard. So we are the standard academically, athletically, socially, our fan base, everything. We are the standard. We're the standard for tailgating. We're the standard for for fan base, the Jag Nation. So we are the standard. And speaking of that, uh, Coach, uh, a listener wanted to pass this along. He says, how does Coach Rollins feel about scheduling some of the top FCS playoff teams, such as Sam Houston and North Dakota State? Wow. Well, I have no problem with it. Just as I said earlier, we want to be a top FCS program overall. So we're preparing like that. We're recruiting like that. We just, we're coaching as if we are, and we are that. So in order to prove it to the world, we have to play those schools. Mm-hmm. Um, you mentioned, we talked briefly about recruiting. What would be some of the needs that you're that you're looking at uh, for this next upcoming recruiting season? Well, um, you know, due to the COVID waiver that most of our guys are coming back, uh, right. we didn't have a very big signing class. So we'll have another smaller class. You know, like I said, the program is in, 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 it's in great shape. So we'll just need a one or two here. So we won't have a drop off at any position where one position is totally going to be depleted for graduation. We're going to have, you know, one guy here, one guy there. So we're recruiting abroad, recruiting um, as far as personnel. It's just and, you know, and, you know, it's interesting um, because I've had other guests on and, you know, you talk to them about coaching and, I mean, the point of even living during the pandemic. It, it's been a long time since something like this has happened. What did what Coach Rollins learn about anything, you know, from a mental standpoint about, coaching during a pandemic well you 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 appreciate the relationships Mm -hmm. Um, you appreciate the relationships that that uh can withstand the test of time and and can withstand distance Uh, so that's what you learn the most about just building those relationships that can withstand the test of time and distance and space doesn't even matter and cultivating the relationships with the people that you are around because due to the pandemic we, we we've lost a lot of people that were near and dear to us yeah. So, but we, it made us appreciate the time that we've spent with everyone. Coach, expectations. What What is Coach Ryan's expectation about this upcoming season? Well, the expectation is uh, to go out there and play good, clean, hard football, physical, tough, mm-hmm. fast, and exciting. And um, if we do that, everything should uh, take care of itself. As far as putting numbers on anything like that, we we want, but we just want to play a great play Southern football. And and something that Coach Banks, I still refer to him as Coach Banks, said during the process, you know, during their their, their research, your name, even from other candidates that that interview, you know, he always came back. Your name was already uh, was always brought up. How does that make you you feel, being that you're so highly thought of? Well, it makes you feel good about the the friendships and the networking, and uh, people can respect how hard you work from afar. So it just just validates that that you've worked hard and you've done things the right way. Now, coach, there's X's and O's, but then there's other parts of the job. Um, Swag Football Media Day. Got an email the other day saying that it's going to be July 20th in mm-hmm. Birmingham, Alabama. So you know what's coming now. You got to kiss the babies, shake <laughs> a lot of hands, albeit during a pandemic. But you you, you get my drift. Absolutely. Um, are you looking forward to that and, and then just kind of, you know, conversating with you, with your fellow colleagues in the conference? And well, do you absolutely. and do and do you know some of them personally already? Well, uh, I know most of them really, really well on our side. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. Coach Fobbs and I are, are, are good friends. Uh, you know, we, we coach together at Northwestern State. Yeah. Uh, coach Dooley and I, we know each other from just from way back, just being in the state together, recruiting together, all of that. So it's, it, we, Coach McKinney and I know him really, really well, just being uh, he in Houston and just always recruiting. and just So it, it's a small coaching world. The, the coaching fraternity is very small, so everyone knows everyone personally. So, uh it's just like re- reuniting with old friends. 
Wow. Reuniting with old friends, but competitive as heck. What about Mr. It's no different than being at the basketball uh, at yeah. the park. You know, mm-hmm. you, you when you're on a, on a basketball court, you, you're playing hard to stay on the court. You exactly. lose, you get off the court. And then we get on our bikes and go get us a snowball and, 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 and go home. Oh, Coach, you're being, you're being nice. It could be my cousin, my best friend. Whatever we're playing, I'm competitor. I'm trying to beat the heck out of him. That's right. Um, we, your best friends may fight, but we're going to get on a bike and go home after we get done playing. <laughs> yeah. I, I, and it depends on who it is. I, I may sneak and put take the air out of that bicycle on one of the back tires <laughs> just a little bit. Um, but, 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 but Willie Sims and, and Coach – Coach Sims at Bethune and family, respectively. How about uh, those guys? You, you, you know them well? I know uh, Coach Sims really, really well. I know um, Coach uh, Simmons really, really well. When he was at Prairie View, um, we ran across each mm-hmm. other. They practiced at our UTSA, and we had a long conversation. Actually, ate lunch together. I know Coach Sims, and he was coaching uh, at UL Lafayette. And so just a lot of mutual friendships that we know each other personally. And, and I'm sure they – Y'all, you got text messages, a, a bunch, a saying bunch of congratulations, text. Coach. <laughs> Absolutely, they did. And uh, and I was very appreciative of all those text messages. And, and last, last thing here, Coach, and I, and I appreciate your time uh, here on the, on, the, on the Carlos Brown show. Um, speaking of that, and you, you went you went through the process, you've gotten all the, the, the text messages. When does it start now? To, 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 to get real, or has it already uh, begun? It's already begun. I mean, mm-hmm. it, the press conference was Friday. We'll staff meeting Saturday morning. So it's, it's, it's already started <laughs> because football is year-round. You know, mm-hmm. if, if you can't go on the, on the back, uh, back patent tour while other guys are working. <laughs> yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. expectations is high at Southern University. Once again, congratulations um, for getting um, the head coaching job. I, I personally will tell you I, I was okay with the decision. I like the decision. I wish you the best success, and hopefully that interim tag will be taken off. And That's the plan. <laughs> yep, there you go. There you go. <laughs> well, uh, Coach, um, if you want uh, some closing comments to – um, the, the listening audience, you have the opportunity to do so right now. If not, uh, we appreciate the time, and, and we look forward to uh, talking with you uh, real soon. Well, let me ask you one quick thing. Was this okay. the first opportunity to, to kind of talk besides the press conference to a, a listening audience? The first one. This is my first one uh, as a, as the head coach of Southern University, outside of the press conference. Hmm. Well, you know, they're coming now. You're going to hear from everybody. <laughs> just, just my, just my opinion. But um, uh, once again, congratulations! Thanks for the Thank time. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk again real soon. I'll be looking forward to it. All right. Thank you for allowing me to come on and speak. I thank you. Safe travels, Coach. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. Yeah, have a have a great day. Great month right. weekend as well. Yeah, okay, thank you. That was Coach Jason Rollins here on the Coles Brown Show. Um, let's see. I'm trying to see if we got any messages again you can go to Coles Brown Facebook messenger page if you want to uh, leave a comment Jack says of course Jason Ron is on the hot seat any coach with an interim tag is on the hot seat in any sport okay I appreciate that Jack and I'll disagree with you as well you know it's kind of funny because I'm the tough guy you know Atlanta, a bus. I always talk about that, high expectations. But once again, uh, let's visit this a couple of years from now. I'm not going to put that tag on there. Matter of fact, you know, I wish everybody the best. Coach Forbes, Coach Dooley, uh, Coach McKinney, all of that. Oh, some, someone says, oh, oh, yeah, McKinney is on the hot seat. He definitely is. And they will be able to move him if you don't see some progress. And, boy, did you see the schedule? A couple of, some schedules came out. Texas Southern, they, they start off the, the bat tough. They play up. 
Grammar State's schedule is tough. You get it? Everybody's schedule is tough. I looked at Norfolk State. Coach Owner's first season. They play up FBS. You know how that is. Southern, that Troy. Let's just be honest. Though my expectations, as that word again, my expectation is not to lose by forty points. Be competitive. Then you have Miles College for Southern University. Then to me, the swing game is that McNeese. It will tell us something. You know, in 2019, Southern started off well. Didn't win the ball game. McNeese played Alcorn. Alcorn shut him out in the second half. Coach Ryan's talked about the importance of winning non-conference FCS games. So you're McNeese. And, I, and I'll give uh, Coach Doom and Prairie View credit. A couple of years ago against Sam Houston State, they very, they were that close. They were that close against Rice. Probably could have, should have, could have won. I think could have won. So it's all about expectations. I talked to some of Southern supporters that are not happy with the basketball program. I defended Coach Woods and I still, but boy, I, I, I'm in a small minority now. I guess expectations, some are high, some are low. And I'll, I'll go back to Texas Southern. That's a tough situation. You haven't won a game. Can't close. But what this fall season will do in 2021, in my opinion, every week will be a war. It will be a battle. There will be no room for mediocrity. If you show, you be competitive. Let's say if you go six and five or five and six, but out of those six losses, they're still losses. But let's say you lost six six games by a total of 14 points or 15. Do you take that into consideration when you're, when you're making the decision? And by the way, Coach Banks, this decision weighs heavily on him. I got 11.02 Central Standard Time. Let me take a break. When I come back, I'll visit with uh, Charles Edmond of the Alcorn State Radio Network. I wonder what our discussion will be like. I know we're talking some swag baseball, and I'll give him the opportunity. Let's see if he wants to walk it back a little bit. As much as it pains me to say this, Jackson State is a clear, clear, dominant, Number one baseball program in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. But I guess the bigger question is, during tournament time, anything can happen. You're zero and zero. We'll talk that, and we'll get his thoughts on, uh, he came up with a, uh, a list of coaches that he thinks that are on the, uh, the old hot seat. And then we'll wrap it up with Brandon B.J. Jones of HBCU game day. We'll get his take on this SWAC uh, championship. Once again, congratulations to a Alabama and them. And did you see the the, the uh, post-game sideline interview? <laughs> Maynard is a character, I tell you. Uh, well, Willis says a 17 team will make the SWAC football championship game in the fall of 2021. Wow. There's so many variables to this. You know, do you beat Alcorn if you're Southern Knight? Gramlin, they're coming off a miserable spring season. But guess what? Coach Favre stated they're 8-2 and two in the last 10 games against Alcorn State. Man, can't wait. So many variables. You're listening to the Carlos Brown Show on the Open Mic Broadcast Network. 
Half Sports will travel. The Open Mic Broadcast Network serving student athletes from Little League, high school, and collegiate coverage right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network. From coast to coast, 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 from dusk till dark. You can catch all student athletic action right here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network, the station designed with you in mind. Serving the community through faith and athletics, the Open Mic Broadcast Network, the voice of student athletics. Hello, this is Alonzo Hardy Jr., the president of the SWAC Alumni Association. The SWAC Alumni Association is an organization founded on December 10, 1999 at the Sheraton Hotel in Birmingham, Alabama. Its mission is to serve as a rallying ground for individuals who have made the Southwestern Athletic Conference the illustrious conference that it is today. Its membership is open to former student athletes who played in the conference in any sport, as well as to coaches, athletic administrators, staff members, game officials, and fans. Annually, the association holds a Legends Awards and Roast Banquet or Luncheon where it honors individuals with Lifetime Achievement Awards, a Chuck Prophet Wacken Master Award, and occasionally a Distinguished Service Award. Proceeds from that event help to finance degree completion scholarships for student athletes who have exhausted their playing eligibility at SWAC universities, but who may still need an extra semester or two to complete their college studies. For more information on the SWAC Alumni Association or to get information on becoming a member, you can send correspondence to SWAC Alumni Association, 875 Miller Creek Lane, Newport News, Virginia, 23602. The email address is SWAC Alumni Association at yahoo.com. Is SWAC Sunday Baseball coverage exclusively on the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Join us each week during the regular season of the Southwest Athletic Conference as we bring you exclusive SWAC baseball coverage. You can join in by dialing 857-777-0000 or by dialing 857-777-0004. SWAC Baseball Sunday afternoon broadcast exclusively on the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Coles Brown Show, heard exclusively right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network. It's been a couple of weeks, but I'm going to visit now with uh, Charles Etman of the Alcorn State Radio Network. Charles, good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Uh, doing well. It is It is morning. It's not 12 noon yet, Central Standard yep. Time, uh, but doing well. How about yourself? Doing well, doing well. Making a stretch turn now. Matter of fact, about halfway uh, to Biloxi, getting ready for the softball tournament that starts in a few days. Wow, Biloxi. You're going to get a chance to, I know it's going to be all work, but maybe a little uh, rest? Maybe just a little bit? Maybe looking at the the Gulf of Mexico a little bit, maybe? A little bit of rest, a lot of rest, and some beach time, even though nobody believes me when I tell them I'm going to go on the beach. Well, beaches are fun, <laughs> but uh, it, it makes me think of the time in O. Yeah, I know we had a bad connection. Yeah, I'm back. I said Jamaica. Well, I'm back. Charles, are are you there? Yes, I am here. You know, that's interesting. When I I remember saying Jamaica, and then boom, that was it. 
silence. Oh. <laughs> is that is that a sign? I I, I, I was saying that uh, join the beach. I, I would love to get back to Ocho Rios, Jamaica. Beautiful time, Charles. <sighs> I've never been to Jamaica. I, I would like to go. I've been to Hawaii a couple of times, but I've never been to Jamaica. I've heard a lot of good good stories about it. Well, maybe. Um, and, and I was joking with you last night. If let's say if. Coach Rollins and, and the and the team goes three and eight. I'm moving to Tibet and becoming a monk, <laughs> and I'm going on a hunger strike. But uh, no, I think I'll just move to Jamaica and be with the Rastafarians in the mountains, and um, I, I would be deeply disappointed. But we, we, we'll we'll get into we'll we'll get into that. But I I, I wanted to, the opportunity to give you the opportunity. The last time we talked. You you were not convinced, and, and we're going to we're going to talk first some swag baseball, and of course all of this is opinions, and the fact is a tournament is coming up, and that's a that's another story. So I'm going to give you the opportunity. Do you want to walk back anything you said? Or are you feeling um, differently about that Jackson State baseball team? I am I am a lot more impressed. Um, you know, there's a lot more body of work since the last time we talked. Mm. Uh, what what I saw from Jackson State was just mainly the Alcorn series. But I did I did take a look at their schedule going forward from that point, and I put a circle around the two games against ULM that they had home and home. They lost mm. one eighteen to six in Monroe, and then a come from behind win over U uh, over ULM at home. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe maybe Jackson State is the real deal. And then you add on top of that, last weekend we got a chance to play Alabama State. They got a chance to see them for the first time, and they're really good. I mean, if you look at their lineup, when you watch those guys at the plate, they're like a football team. You know, they got guys in the lineup 6'1", 225, 6'2", 215. I mean, they're like a football team playing baseball. And Jackson mm-hmm. State beat that team six times. And Jackson, uh, Alabama State's got a lot of pitching. They got guys that can hit the cover off the ball for power. They got some speed, and yet Jackson State beat them six times. So maybe at the end of the day, after looking at more body of work of Jackson State and other teams that they played, right now Jackson State is really looking good at this point in time. But we've we've also said this before about other teams, and they have a chance to go twenty four and zero in the division. And they will be the odds-on favorite to win the tournament. But the tournament, as we know in the SWAC, is about matchups, and it's a totally different animal. It's not always that the best team in the regular season wins the tournament. But right now, I have to say, Omar Johnson's doing a doing a really nice job, and he has been doing a nice job with his Jackson State program since he took over for Bob Brady. You know, when you look at Omar Johnson, you know, a lot of people don't feel him because of his personality. He doesn't really say a whole lot. He's very, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of people might not know this about him, but he's very superstitious. He does things the same way pregame. He doesn't do pregame interviews. He sits in the same spot in the dugout doing his lineup. He has a ritual. He has a routine. He doesn't do any interviews pregame, but it all works for him because he's, he puts a very good product on the field. I think they lead the nation in stolen bases. They can hit the yep. cover off the ball. Uh, I think the only issue that they've had is two things, fielding, being able to field, in tight situations, and then do they have enough pitching? I think that's that's the key, especially once you get into middle, short relief, and long relief. That's been the issue over the years. And it's just a plug-and-play team. I mean, the characters are different, but if you look at what they do, it's pretty much the same. They can hit for power. They've got speed. And it's just a matter of can they put it together come tournament time. Yeah, and that will be the uh, the big thing. Um as I stated before you came on, it, it, you know, you wipe the slate clean in the tournament, zero and zero. But uh, we are the SWAC. Our heritage lifts us to great heights. Because my history is forged by trailblazers that motivates me today to focus on my future. We are the SWAC. We are the new trailblazers. And this is my heritage.
Welcome back to this week's edition of the Carlos Brown Show. I'm visiting with Charles Edmond of the Alcorn State uh, Radio Network. Charles, what were we talking about? Uh, you, you were talking about Jackson State and going 24-0 and and can they get it done in the tournament. We were just talking about their pitching and, you know, what they have to do in the tournament to get over the hump because that's always been, that's always been the issue with them. Yeah, um, 104 stolen bases. They average 3.25 stolen bases per game, and both ranked number one in NCAA Division One. And as a team, I was saying they're batting 304, which ranks 11th nationally. The question is simply this: expectations. We've been using that word a lot here on today's show. The expectations, and actually, it's all about getting it done in the tournament. And I can gather from your from your your comments that. You think Alabama State will be a challenge to Jackson State in the tournament, albeit they're zero and six against uh, Jackson State. But what other teams that you that you see kind of set the scenario up if the tournament started this, let's say this Wednesday, how would it how would it look? Well, of course, in the, in the baseball tournament, you got two brackets. Okay, so in mm-hmm. one bracket, it's the one seed and the four seed. In the opposite bracket, it's the two seeds and the three seeds matched up together. So Jackson would be in the bracket with the four seed in the east, which is going to be all corn, uh, the four seed in the west, which appears to be Texas Southern, and the one seed in the west, which could be, uh, let's just say Grambling or Prairie View. I'm, I'm going to say Grambling. So uh, Jackson would play Texas Southern, the four seed in the west. Then, then the next game would be the winner of the opposite one, four, which could be Grambling and Alcorn. So for me, for me, I think the real challenge is going to be for Jackson State in that second game. Do I think they can get by Texas Southern? Yes, they, I do believe that. I do think they can score a lot of runs. And TSU is not a team that typically scores a ton of runs. So I think they'll get by TSU, albeit Mike Robb always comes up with tricks up his sleeve come tournament time. But it's that second game. Let's just say Grambling Allcorn. Of course, I'm pulling for the Braves to pull up the upset. But if they don't, then it's Jackson and Grambling. And Grambling's already beat Jackson State once this season. And I think Grambling could be a tough matchup for them. And then once you get, you know, beyond that, you got to see how your pitching is looking like. So I, I think for Jackson State, clearly they're going to be the talk of the tournament. Southern, you know, even though we had, didn't play a tournament last year, Southern is the defending tournament champs. Southern has struggled with a first-year head coach. Uh, coach Jackson has moved on. But still, you can't count them out only because they're the defending champs. But Jackson State's going to be the team. And especially if they go 24-0, and there's going to be a lot of pressure on Jackson State to get it done in the tournament because it's assumed that they're going to get it done in the tournament. Alabama State went 24-0 and in baseball. And if you look back throughout SWAC history, you know, you look at SWAC basketball. Valley one year with Sean Woods coaching was 17-1 and one in, in, in the regular season. A lot of pressure. So there's going to be a lot of pressure on Jackson State. It's, a, it's assumed, it's expected that they should be able to win the tournament. But as we know, the SWAC baseball tournament is the one unknown amongst all the championships that we have because the obvious is not so obvious. So, yeah, Jackson State grew on me after we had that conversation a few weeks ago. I admit I was wrong. Um, and, you know, they have the team that can probably put pressure on teams in the NCAA tournament. They beat the number one team, Louisiana, the last time they won the SWAC tournament. They beat the number one team in the nation, won nothing. So mm-hmm. they can get it done. It's just a matter of in a four- or five-day, win- in a four-day window, in the next week and a half, can they put all that together like they did in the regular season? It's easier to say, but it's harder to do. We'll see if that happens. Yeah, expectations, pressure. We both were at a regional at Alex Box, the old and the new Alex Box Stadium, and I, I remember talking with you. It's a, you know, in, in, in that pressure packed situation, uh, when you look at pitching, you have to look at two two words: quality and quantity. You, you remember with 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 um, Chase Richard for Southern. He had a excellent performance. What it was two zero Charles? Yep. And that place was silent. And what happened? When he went to the bullpen, I mean the first couple of pitches. And so 
you look at the bullpen, then you all you, you often have talked about defense and fielding in those situations, how that could really you gotta be on top of your game with that. And as you stated, there have been several instances where SWAC teams have had success in the first tournament game. But going into that bullpen and then you know and in those cases they go into the winner bracket then the results haven't been as, as well hasn't been well so yes the pressure's on Jackson State I, I I would agree with you but you know for the regular season clear cut there's no doubt about it the biggest question is who who would be the the next best team and you know you can have debates between Alabama State and Grambling State so uh, swag baseball term. I, I don't think we talked with you when the announcement came out. Um, get your thoughts on the games being played in Madison, Alabama, moving from um, Jackson. Well, per, from a personal perspective, I am disappointed because uh, uh, Smithwell Stadium is like 35 minutes from my house, so it, it's an easy, easy road trip for me. Um, but I do understand, and from what I've been told, that you know there was a contractual obligation to play in Jackson if certain um, improvements were made to Smith Wills to make it uh, acceptable to the SWAC brass. And from my understanding, it didn't happen. Um, you know, the person that that's kind of over that, Tim Bennett, who helped bring the Mississippi Braves to to a pearl. He also got the the minor league team in Biloxi, so he's familiar with how these things go. Um, I saw him when we played a makeup game with Valley at Smithville Stadium, and he did indicate that the SWAC would be pleased with all the, the adjustments that needed to be made. But apparently it didn't happen. Um, and I understand that uh, Madison was always in the SWAC's back pocket, that whenever the SWAC was ready to move on it, that it would be ready. Uh, Biloxi was also kind of a dark horse uh, destination as well. Uh, again, for me, because the softball term is down here, it would be great if, you know, make a short trip to Biloxi for the baseball as well. But, you know, no, nonetheless, um, where they're playing, it's right off uh, Interstate 565, right outside of Huntsville. It's a very nice facility. I think fans will be pleased with it. And uh, I think, you know, for Alabama State, 180 miles up the road, it's not too far from Jackson or, or, or all corners. It's going to be a tough trip, though, for Prairie View, Texas Southern and Southern. I think it'll be it'll be a, t- a tough trip, but I think you know playing in a big venue like this, a nice facility, I think people will be pleased with what they're looking at for those who come to the tournament. Visit with Charles Edmund of the Old Corn State Radio Network. Last but not least, we had an interesting conversation, and um, in our hour number one, we, we kind of <laughs> got into it about coaches on the on the hot seat. Um, but let me ask you. Um, we talk. Your thoughts on the uh, Southern University hire? I am very pleased um, with the decision of keeping it in house. Uh, you you have a championship roster there, and what you want to do is you want to keep the continuity as smooth as you can, mm-hmm. because there are going to be some players that will transfer out regardless when there's a coaching change. It just that's just the nature of the business. And so you want to keep the band together as best as you can, especially with your coaching staff. Roman Banks, the AD at Southern, has had a history when you have a championship roster to keep it in-house, like Sandy Pugh when she left to go to Prairie View. Coach Funches was hired there. Kerrick Jackson wins the championship, the uh, baseball championship. He keeps it in-house there. And so I think it was a good decision to keep it in-house because you have a championship roster um, that, that you have there. So I agree with the decision, you know, the whole Marshall Falk thing, you know, it, it grew a lot of legs, but, you know, and there were some discussions, but at the end of the day, it didn't happen. So I'm glad that Roman Banks did what he did uh, in terms of keeping it in-house. Uh, the contract terms, you know, you and I had an animated conversation about that last night. I, I'm not feeling the one-year deal, but I, I understand you want to give him a chance to, to, to prove that he can that he's the guy for the job long term, I get that. Um, so hey, we'll we'll see what happens. It's going to be tough. I mean, obviously with Pine Bluff, 
you know, all corns coming to the West, uh, you know, Grambling's on rebuild. You have a chance to, to make some, some, some inroads and be a guy long term. But a one year deal is, is, you know, that means you got to hit it out the park this year or you got to win at, I wouldn't say the highest of levels, but you got to win at a pretty respectable level to convince the administration and the Jaguar Nation that you're the coach long term. And just a one-year deal, it's just a lot of pressure there. I would have said a two- or three-year deal just to get him comfortable because there's going to be some growing pains with a new with a new guy in charge. It happens in business. It happens in sports. So we'll see. I, I mean, I, I think it's going to be a, I think it's going to be an interesting dynamic there. But I am to answer your question. I'm happy with the decision that was made to keep it in house. I, I think somebody must disagree with you. I hear the horn, boy. <laughs> <laughs> It's um, uh, you, you, you know, in, in the perfect world, if I had the position, I would. We'd all be fired. Uh, no, see, <laughs> and, and, and I think that that's probably what people would think. But <laughs> can you believe I am actually for him? I would have given him more than one in one year, but. It is what it is, and I had him on earlier in the show. He knows about the expectations. This is – he didn't turn it down. So I, at the end of the day, here's just my personal opinion. And, and again, there are different variables, but seven, eight wins, eight wins, Coles Brown would say, let's talk with your agent. Here we go. We're in discussions. We give you a deal. Coach Banks explain two weeks ago how they issue out contracts. And so you're really looking at three plus one, four years, not only one year difference than say someone who offers five years. But I, I, my gut feeling tells me good decision. And I think he's going to do well. I really do. And, and guess what, Charles, if he doesn't, you know, who will be the first to say bad job. But, but if he does a bad job, then does that mean that he's worthy of another contract and you're going through a continuity change? Because let's let's be honest here. Southern's got a window right now in the fall of twenty one to make this happen. If they don't if they don't win the championship, the window starts to close a little bit. Yeah, they're young, yeah. You got a quarterback situation that you're dealing with with Skelton and you're you're moving those pieces around. But if you lock your coach in for two or three years, you know you got that guy there. You know he's going to make some changes and make some adjustments, and you have that guy. But on a one-year deal, if you go five and six, I mean, we, we all hope – I mean, you guys hope that he does really well. But what if he doesn't? There's a chance he might not. Then what? He what needs if he all does? For him. Well, I'm just – I guess I'm looking at the glass half empty mm -hmm. more so than the glass half full because it, there's a possibility that it might not happen. So, yes, it's easy to make the adjustment when it happens. But what if it doesn't happen? Then you got to make another decision in seven months. I mean, I, for me, if I'm an athletic director, if he's my guy, I'm going to make him comfortable to give him a two- or three-year deal because there's going to be some pieces moved around. Coach is going to leave your staff. Players going to transfer. It's going to happen. It, it, it always does. So with that continuity – you got your leader in place for a couple of years, three years. Let him make those changes and adjustments, and then you settle back in, and he's comfortable. I'm not saying he's not with the one year deal, but there's no guarantee. I mean, just moving to the West is no guarantee. Alcorn's going to win the division, but Fred McNair has the cachet and the years to where he's got the backing. But a one year deal, eh, I, I want my coach, if he's my guy, I want him to be comfortable right off the bat. I'm not saying he's not. I mean, he's got to prove himself. I think that's the bottom line. But it's, I, I, would, I would say a two- or three-year deal, and then we'll talk about it in a couple of years to see where the direction is headed, is pointing the right direction. We'll go forward with it. But a one-year deal, it's really, really tough. I mean, Dr. Ely was on a one-year deal, I believe, and, and he mm -hmm. got another one. Uh, I mean, so you can dig yourself out of it, but it's really, really tough. And I, I just think considering this roster, I would have given them a two or three, get them comfortable. There's going to be some changes, and we just go from there. All right. Thank you for your opinion. But I slightly disagree, and I brought up 
um, the example of Coach Odoms. You want you want to quickly go down memory lane? Two thousand and twelve, four and seven. He was four and five. He was responsible for nine games. As I stated, an hour number one. Um, I guess the administration at that time saw something that we didn't. Correct? Because yep. you know now. If you look at the roster, yeah, you could say, yeah, this is a championship roster. It's built to success now. We didn't know as much about the roster then. We do know that Coach Mitchell was the previous coach, and we all know that that day of infamy. It's lost to Mississippi Valley 6-0. Then they go to, to Coach Odoms, and he was an interim tag. Based on what we know now, four and five, that's what he ended up, and, and I won't go through the record again. Based on that, if Charles Edmund is the the person that is in charge, four and five, based on that, would you have thought that the next year that he would win a championship, and then the next year, 2014, he gets back again and lost to his boogeyman, Alcorn, even then? Um, I wouldn't have thought that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I would have given, I would have given, I would have given Dawson Odoms because he took over in in midstream. He took uh-huh. over after that six nothing loss to, to 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 Valley, and it was just unfortunate. And I thought a change mm-hmm. should have been made then. I mean that's that that just that can't happen. A national TV game, and, and I was did. shocked at what I, I was mm-hmm. shocked at what I saw. But 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 that would have given me even more of a of, of synergy to to lock in Dawson Odoms because he took over in midstream. And I think he was brought in under – he was hired as a coach, interim coach under tough circumstances. So, if he – again, if he's your guy, then you got to make him feel like he's your guy. And so and I would watch that. him. And they right. did that. And, and, and I think that – I think the same – I mean, even though different administration, different mindset, I think now the stakes are even higher because of what's at stake. Celebration bowl, money's involved, and base, especially now with COVID-19, attendance, all that. I think – you just have to look at it a little bit differently than it was back then, you know, because the Jaguar Nation was heavy, heavy, heavy then, and they're heavy, heavy, heavy now. But we're dealing with different circumstances. So I, I would have, I would have locked my coach in now if he's my guy. I would have given him that, and just like they did with Dawson Odoms. But a one-year deal. Well, mm, well, 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 let me say this, and we'll wrap this up. All right. We we give our opinions, but my question to you is, do you? They may still do it regardless. They'll come in and give them an extension. I mean, they'll give them a new contract. There is a possibility of that, no matter what happens. Yeah, I, I would have, for me, just this is my own opinion, and I'm not in that seat. I, I know. Roman the one, the one year job. deal is what sticks out to you, right? I would have given it on the front end. I would have given it on the front end rather than the back end. Because well, on the front end, you, you want to be comfortable on the front end. Not saying you're not right now, but I would have just said, Coach, you're, you're, you're my guy. I'm going to lock in for a few years, and then we'll kind of revisit it down the road. On the front end, now, a professional is going to do the job whether they have six months on the job or a year on the job or three years on the job. It doesn't matter. But I just, for me, as a boss, as a supervisor, I want my folks to feel comfortable right off the bat so they can hit the ground running even more so. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't think Southern's doing anything, and whether you agree with it or not, if you look at what they've done, this is what they do. This is the way to do it. I've been saying that for five, six, seven years. You know, so you have to agree to disagree or agree. If you agree with that, you disagree with how they put contracts up. That's just the way they do it. Well, you know, not saying it's wrong or right. It's just the way they do it. But uh, interim, that interim tag, wow! You know, that really has that really has some folks in the uproar. It really does. But at the end of the day, he wins. He gets a shot. I say he gets a shot, no matter what happens. But I could be in the minority on that. Well, Charles, we'll talk to you again real soon. Any closing comments? Well, it should it should be. I tell you what, the swag 
this is the most drama, the most story filled, the most headlines that, that we've had in probably 20 years, 25 years. Just coaches, personalities. There's never a dull moment in this conference, at least through mm-hmm. the last year. And I think it's going to continue because you talk about coaches on the hot seat. There could be some more changes. That's, you know, we, we, we talked about that at length, you know, ranking the coaches' seats, how hot it is from one to five. That's another discussion, and uh, it, it's going to generate a lot of buzz for sure in the offseason. Wow, it is going to be spectacular to have all those head coaches and all of them have their unique personalities. It's going to be interesting. I'll be I'll be in the other line. I'll be I won't be at the line where everyone's around Coach Sanders because you know that's what's going to happen. <laughs> They're gonna be over there, and you, you. I know you'll be there, so you don't have to answer. Yes, that. I'll be yes. in the other direction. I, I'm, I'm gonna <laughs> talk to the coaches, and they'll have some new ones. Coach Robinson, I'll get him first, and then I'll, I'll, I'll make my way around the room. I don't like long lines. <laughs> I, don't I, I really don't. I don't either. Well, I, you know, I do owe Cornell Maynard an apology. I will when I mm-hmm. see him because well, I'll go see him. Because for, uh, for the first couple of years, we never really didn't interview him. You know, it, when, by the time we made it around to him, you know, it was about over with. And, 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 and yes, I did dismiss the fact that, well, Cornell Maine is just another coach at Alabama A&M. Oh, He'll wow. do whatever he's going to do. He might fall by the way. So I, and, and, hey, it, 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 that's just how I looked at it at the time, and it was to my detriment. And I apologize to him because right now he's he's – He's the kingpin right now. I mean, you, you heard his comments after hoisting that trophy, and and deservingly so. And so I, I will get a chance. Hopefully, I'll get a chance to talk with him and just chew it up with him a little bit. But you know, he he he's got everything that he deserves: a new contract and the SWAC championship, player of the year coming back. And Keel Glass said, "Let's run it back." Deservingly so, and and that's going to make it even more interesting. That yeah, that that's interesting on social media. And, and quickly, uh, tell Mr. Harper. I was surprised he made that comment on um, on Twitter. But you know what? Hey, confident, cocky, and arrogant. Not bad yeah. adjectives. What he say? It starts in the A, and it ends in the A. That's right. right. Yeah. Wow. Okay. You know, I, I've often <laughs> said I'm only going to promise two things. We're going to show up, and we're going to play hard. Yeah. You know, you put yourself out there, so, you know, hey. But – that's what happens in the conference. You know, you have a lot of uh, egos. Not to say that's a bad thing. Confidence is running very high. But it'll be even, interesting. Even Fred McNair said, you know, we're going to, when we get, when we resume football, we're going to get back what, what belongs to us. You know what he meant by that? Swag championship. So mm-hmm. that, add, that, that adds even more to it. So it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to it. Oh, oh yeah. A lot of fun. Well, safe travels. Have a great weekend, and uh, we'll talk again real soon. All right, guys. Be safe. All right. That was Charles Evans of the Alcorn State Radio Network. Going to take a quick timeout. When I come back, I'm going to visit with Brandon B.J. Jones of HBCU Game Day. We'll get his thoughts on several topics. You're listening to the Carlos Brown Show on the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Drivers and bicyclists both have the right to be on the road and travel safely. And when we're on the road together, safety is a shared responsibility. State law requires drivers to maintain at least three feet of clearance when passing bicyclists. And bicyclists should always ride with the direction of traffic and follow all traffic signals. It's safer. It's courteous. It's the law. A message from the Regional Planning Commission Pedestrian and Bicycle Program. Ladies and gentlemen, in the next seven years of bigger and bigger enrollments, America's grade schools will need nearly a quarter of a million extra teachers besides those to fill normal vacancies. This great need, plus the growing public interest in education and improvements in schools, make elementary school teaching a more rewarding career than ever, a career that high school and college students should certainly consider. Education holds America's future, perhaps your future. The birth of legends are storied in this conference. We must never forget our rich history. We now turn our gaze to the future. 
the new legends will emerge. New heroes to arise. The Southwestern Athletic Conference. Be our history. Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union has 13 different locations to better serve you. Locations in Rosenberg, Missouri City, Katy, College Station, Bryan, Brenham, and Waller, Texas. For more information, you can contact them on their toll-free number, 855-391-2149. Or you can send an email to information at bvscu.org. Serving the community through faith and athletics. The Open Mic Broadcast Network. This week's edition of the Cole Brown Show, heard exclusively right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network and Spreaker.com. Last guest of today's show, he's no stranger, Brandon B.J. Jones, Lacey C. Game Day. B.J., good afternoon to you. Eastern time, right? Or are you, you back in Central Standard? I don't know, you may be trying. I, I am Central Standard. I am in Birmingham, Alabama. Oh, okay. That's a good thing. Well, it's been an interesting show. Some agreement and disagreement, uh, but first and foremost, I got you on. I, I, I want to get your thoughts on the uh, SWAC Spring Championship, Alabama and M. You did predict Alabama and M to to win it. Um, I think that Arkansas Pine Bluff um, is going to look at that game and going to go coulda, woulda, shoulda. Mm-hmm. You remember that first half, Carlos, especially. As the the first half was winding down, Arkansas Pine Bluff had all the momentum, uh, and they had the opportunity to go up two scores. Uh, you had the fumble by Tyron Ralph on that reverse. Uh, also, uh, mm-hmm. right before that, you had the miss block punt that extended a drive, uh, caused the penalty, extended the drive, allowed Alabama and them to get some points on the board. Uh, Arkansas Pine Bluff. Bluff Left about 13 points on the field in the uh, in the end of the first half, and that can end up coming back to bite them. Uh, but overall, man, good game by both teams. Alabama and them's defense only gave up uh, six uh, in in the second half. That was impressive. Uh, they they stepped up when they needed to. Uh, but Akil Glass, man, he just continues to impress. I'm impressed mm-hmm. by that young man and. I'm excited to see him again in the fall. You know, it's interesting. You, you speak about Mr. Glass, and I'll call him Mr. Glass. Um, I, I think one of the things that I had brought up in pre last week's show, it would be which defense was able to, to contain, not stop, I say contain. And then, two, I think you mentioned about keeping uh, Mr. Glass upright. And at some points you saw Arkansas Pine Bluff get to him, but his composure and, and talking to an NFL personnel who's going to be doing the story on, on Mr. Glass, um, he believes he really will have the opportunity. He he will get drafted. Now, you know, that's a sore spot with many because you no know, – Football players from HBCUs were drafted, but, you know, they signed on as uh, UFA, undrafted free agents. We'll get back We'll get back to that. But Mr. Glass has an opportunity, wouldn't you think? He's, to me, I, I believe he can get drafted. But am I crazy, or should I just look at what the trend has been in recent drafts that – it will be more financially better for the owners and teams to bring him in as a undrafted free agent. I think with Akil Glass, he has something going for him. A lot of quarterbacks that have come through the conference outside of Jalen Morton has not had. And that's 6'5 and 230 pounds. Uh, and, and the arm strength to match uh, that stature. 
And one of the things that he excels in is looking off uh, safeties, mm-hmm. uh, you know, reading defenses. He does that extremely well. I think he'll be an NFL draft pick, I think, right now. Uh, where he needs to work on uh, is fine-tuning that game. You saw him in the first half uh, in the SWAT championship game as well as in the Magic City Classic where he was kind of off a little bit, almost like sometimes he has to warm up and then mm-hmm. get get it going, uh, working on that part of his game. but and, and you saw him use the wheels a little bit. We don't, we don't think of him as a mobile guy, but no. he showed you last week, and especially in the Alabama State game as well, that when he needs to, he he can use his wheels. Uh, he's a great he's a great athlete. Um, at 6'5", 225, 230 pounds. Um, I think that he has a legitimate shot uh, to mm-hmm. be drafted. And I think this fall he can improve his draft stock. I think he can play his way up a few rounds. It'll be interesting to follow his progress. He makes all of the throws too. Touch, throws a deep ball, um, goes through his progressions, his reads. You know, impressive. And I've seen him firsthand, and he's gotten better since the time last time I saw him at at Mumford Stadium, uh, when Southern and Southern beat and them the last two times. But they coulda, woulda, shoulda. Mm-hmm. They could have very well lost both games. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, yeah. you know, you wish the best for this young man, um, and for selfish reasons, uh, I, I know that arrogant, cocky coach. You know, hour from me. He played at an FCS school, one double at the time, and you know it, it. It would be nice for selfish reasons to have him in New Orleans, but maybe wishful thinking, huh? <laughs> 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 he could get there and grow, and uh, you know, under a quote unquote head coach that's a quarterback guy. Yeah, yeah. Could you imagine him with a coach like Sean Payton uh, or Bruce Arians? Or one of those guys that you know that does well with quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Man, the sky's to be the limit, and he doesn't have a bad quarterback coach right now. And Connell Maynard, and remember what he was able to do as a player at North Carolina A and T, right. uh, two-time BAC Player of the Year, uh, when he was able to go on and do it in the, in the Arena League. So uh, he's had some 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 solid coaching at the quarterback position. Yeah, and, and speaking of Alabama, and congratulations to both Alabama. And them and University of Arkansas Pine Bluff because Pine Bluff did some historic things in the spring season. They went to places where they historically have not done well. They they get wins in both of those situations. Albeit now we see a grammar team that has really struggled, mm-hmm. but uh, most impressive coming into uh, A. W. Mumford Stadium. Absolutely, and, yeah. and get that 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 victory. So. BJ, uh, special teams also, some big plays in that game. So you had a little bit of everything. Yes, yes, yes. I thought that that, that fake punt by Alabama, by Alabama A&M deep in their own territory, that was big. Gutsy call. That was big. Yes, it was. But that's Maynard. That's Coach Maynard. Mm-hmm. It, it really? Uh, so, so no surprise. So with that being said, BJ, now all eyes are going to be going on to the fall. And I asked you an interesting question. I'm going to ask you again. How do you think the predictions will come when they gather July 20th in Birmingham, predicted order finish? How do you see that? How will they predict your prediction of how they will predict? There you go. I think in the Eastern Division, you'll have people splitting votes between Florida A&M and Alabama A&M. Mm-hmm. Um, Florida A and M, what they're bringing back, and what they've added, Florida A and M was arguably the best uh, team in black college football the last time we were all playing. They beat North Carolina A and T. Uh, they beat the Western Division champ from from the SWAT. Uh, no one else has that resume. Uh, no, no one else ha- has that uh, resume, uh, and they're bringing a lot of talent back. You got two All-American receivers, All-American safety, um, and, and Marquise Bell, I think, a guy who I think will also get drafted. Um, and then you have Alabama a who just won that division. I think that those two will, will basically split first-place votes. And I think ultimately that first-place vote 
um, out of what they've just done will probably go to Alabama A and M. And then in the West, I think you have three schools that'll be splitting first place votes: mm-hmm. Arkansas Pine Bluff because they are the champion, Alcorn because they're the champion of the East moving to the West, and Southern because Southern just bringing back so much. Uh, they're bringing back so much. Uh, you look at the depth that Southern was able to create uh, in in the spring. Because uh, they had so many guys down, and the guys who stepped up, you may not know the names, but they can ball. And now you get those guys back plus the depth that you already have, the expectations for Southern is going to be high. So I think you're going to have those three teams, uh, Arkansas, Pine Bluff, Alcorn, and Southern, splitting first-place votes. And I think ultimately the media would probably go with Alcorn. Yeah. I, I can see Southern predicted third. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll come back later and ask you – and, you know, they're, they're, their polls and their predictions, and they are what they are. But to me, BJ, and let's see if you agree or disagree. And guess what? It's all right if you disagree with me. You know, I just want to say that. Um, I like to look at after summer school, who's coming, who's going, and then once fall camp starts, then you kind of can have a, a, a better picture of predictions. So I'm saying I'll have to say this. We'll, I'll come back and ask you for your predictions. Um, you can do it right before SWAC, SWAC Football Media Day when they come out with their predictions. How about that? Hey, it sounds good with me. Like I said, you got to know uh, what you're going into battle with. And, mm-hmm. and, and a lot of times it's early, we're guessing. Well, you know, they have polls, and let's see where early predictions, mm-hmm. uh, two early predictions, that's kind of what I look at now because you got to see what, 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 what happens. But, um, Teams that, like Arkansas Pine Bluff and Alabama a and I, I think now, with their expectations, what they've done, they're going to be hunted. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And and, and so you, you, you look at that. You also look at high expectations. To so your point about FAMU, um, Bethune-Cookman coming in the conference, it is <laughs> – you're not going to be able to take a week off. No. Now, when you look at schedules, Carlos, everyone mm-hmm. has a four or five game stretch on their yeah. schedule in this conference where you just go, wow. For Southern, you got a stretch that includes Prairie View, Alcorn, Jackson mm-hmm. State, Fam Hugh, and Grambling. Uh, Alabama A&M has a stretch uh, that includes Jack- Grambling, uh, Jackson State, uh, Fam Hugh, uh, Alabama State, and I think it's somewhere else, some, someone else. I think it's Bethune Cookman squeezed in there. Like there are stretches on everyone's schedule where you just go, wow. Mm-hmm. So I, I mean, th- this new swag. Uh, we talked about this spring. We had three teams ranked in the top twenty-five, something that hadn't been done in the conference in a long time. I think that that's going to be more of the norm now because of the strength of the teams that you have in. Uh, you're going to have someone who's going to win eight games and probably going to be left out of the SWAC championship game. Eight or nine games are going to be left out. Yeah, I, I, I can see that. That's that's why um, when, when we're talking about expectations and I said eight wins for, for, for Coach Rollins. And by the way, I appreciate having him on. Uh, to today, what, what what are your thoughts on on Coach Rollins? Are, are you how does that interim tag fit? It, it seems to be bothering um, some Southern Knights, some listeners. Hey, it, hey, that interim tag it just basically means he's auditioning for the job. But I tell you what, I like what I hear from Coach Rollins. Listen to him on your show. Uh, you know, he's very excited. He's energetic. He's passionate about what he's doing. And he's thought highly of by not only guys in the in, in the coaching business, but the players as well. And his mantra of, hey, we're going to lock down the state of Louisiana. I know that that resonates with a lot of Southern fans. Uh, and if you look at what he's done at Tulane and UTSA, especially as far as getting talent in, he does an excellent job there. Um, I think the sky's the limit for Coach Rollins. I had someone in the business tell me that Jason Rollins was going to be a head coach. Southern just got the jump on everyone. Uh, but with with this season, I do think that there is a level, that's a standard that he has to meet uh, to get that interim tag uh, 
uh, removed. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think that you know there has to be. I think you have to get to at least that eight win uh, mark, uh, and I don't think that you can finish any worse than second uh, mm-hmm. in, in 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 the division. Uh, Southern is in, is in a different place than what Southern was the last time we we, we took this route. Uh, we're talking about 2012. We're talking mm-hmm. about the talent that has come back. And you talk about a team that finished the season ranked 19th in the country and by all accounts will probably start the season, if not in the top 25, just outside the top 25. So the expectations are very, very high. So yeah. I think that there is a little pressure on, 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 on Coach Robinson's staff. Yeah, and, and I expect the same leeway that was given back to that 2012. Now, this is me. That same leeway, if you can extend Coach Odom's contract, and he went four and five, eight, seven wins, you can you can extend the contract for Coach Rollins, even if he doesn't get to Atlanta or if it's Atlanta a bus. But we shall see. Um, two quick things, I, and I, I give you credit. Uh, I saw this on social media that you um, posted about FCS draft picks by conference over the last 10 NFL drafts. You're familiar with that, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Okay. Very interesting. I printed it out and I kept it for reference. Missouri Valley, 25 draft Mm -hmm. picks, CAA, 22, Southern Conference, 22, Big Sky Conference, 20, Ohio Valley Conference, 12, Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, 12, Southland Conference, 11, Ivy League, 8, Big South Conference, 6, Southwestern Athletic Conference, 6, Patrick League, 3 players, Pioneer Football League, 3, Great West Conference, 2, FCS Independent, 2, and Northeast Conference, 0. What will it take? We've got about two minutes left here in the day show. What will it, what will it take to get those numbers better? For the Southwestern Athletic Conference. First thing you talk about those first two two conferences that you pick, the, the we, we talked about the Missouri Valley and the CA uh, the, uh, the CAA. Um, those are two of the toughest. Those are the best conferences in FCS, bar none. Mm-hmm. The Missouri Valley every year takes a Big Ten team to the to they, they take them to task. Uh, they beat win these FBS games on a regular basis. If you look at the playoffs. It's dominated by the Missouri Valley. I think what, what what that league has done, a lot of those teams are the flagship schools of their state, so they have an advantage over us. They're, they're not in SEC country. They're the flagship. I think what it takes for us is that we have to uh, get better, uh, go out, and, and show that the conference is better. Coach Rollins talked about it. Winning non-conference games are important because that brings the attention to your conference and, and, and helps the strength of your comfort. Once we're able to do that, and then uh, scouts give our players the benefit of the doubt, you will see us jump up uh, and be up there with the MEAC and, 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 and go forward. But we have to start winning those out of conference games and developing players a lot better than what we have. Quickly, BJ, uh, Southern University is launching their Southern University football helmets campaign. A $550 donation donors will receive a mini replica helmet, and it's a gold helmet. Mm-hmm. Are you excited about that, uh, BJ? I am. The check is already written, and, and, and it's already in Baton Rouge. Well, I got to get mine ready. <laughs> I got to get mine ready. Uh, I got to talk to the budget director. BJ, appreciate the time as always. We'll talk again next week. All right, thank you, Carlos, man. Looking forward to it. All right. want to thank quickly Coach Jason Rollins, also Charles Edmonds, Brandon B.J. Jones of HBCU Game Day producing today's show, Dr. Michael Prince. Quickly, Dr. Prince, uh, Sunday, who do you have? We're going to have Shotgun Willie Simmons come on board with us. Shotgun Willie Simmons of FAMU University. I'm glad he's not on the hot seat. He's an outstanding coach. Until next Saturday at 10 a.m., for another edition of the Coles Brown Show, heard exclusively right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network and Spreaker.com. Until that time, as always, peace and God bless.